Hey guys, I'm Angus Crookshank of the Ottawa Senators, and I'm coming on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap, great steaks, great staff? Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. you. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Lay down. With 4.10 to go in the second period, and now a breakaway feed. Angus Crookshank in all alone on Kaler. Snap scores. Angus Crookshank. Martin near circle. Pass intercepted by Crookshank. He breaks it. He shoots. He scores. Although nice job by Kelleher, keeps it in, plays it in front for Crookshank, he scores! Power play, going right to left, here comes Angus Crookshank, he breaks in, he shoots and scores! He's up on Crookshank, stick again, right wing side, he moves in, in front, backhand shot, save, rebound, Blackburn sends it wide. After- Kelleher banks it off to Crookshank, Crookshank moves in, he's in front, backhand shot, great save by... Magnus Crookshank in the middle, Knight keeps it out, the rebound spiked back, a rip from the slot, Knight stones Kelleher. The ultimate captain, he'll leave it forward for... Uh, so born in North Van, uh, he played a little BWC, and then he went on to Langley uh, Riverman, and then on to uh, University of Hampshire. Uh, what was your whole hockey experience like growing up and uh, what was childhood like? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty fortunate. I, uh, my dad played uh, Division One college hockey as well. So I, it was, I was kind of one of those things where you kind of, your dad kind of forced you into it at a young age. But I mean, I was pretty fortunate that uh, I was I kind of caught, caught on to it pretty quick. Uh, I mean, it's the game that I could see myself play until I was, until I'm probably in the grave. But uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up playing. Uh, funny enough, I actually started out at North Shore Winter Club, um, played my minor hockey there, and then went to BWC Hockey Academy, which was run by Marko Balkovic, uh, who did a fantastic job there. Um, and those, I, without a doubt, I think are the most influential years of my hockey career, hands down. I mean, I mean, growing up, it was was an okay player I mean it was kind of short to be honest a little chubby and uh kind of in around that age it started to hit hit puberty a little bit starting to kind of fill out and grow a little bit and I mean everything started to kind of click and I mean at the end of the day uh I was very fortunate to have the right coach at the right time and um kind of helped me uh progress my career and then obviously went into Langley um that jump from minor from hockey academy to junior is huge I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you're playing against guys that are 20 years old and you're 17, 16, 17 years old. So, uh, that was definitely an adjustment. And then obviously going to the NCAA, that's a whole other ball game. Like there's, I honestly think that's the hardest jump for kids these days. It's going from junior A to college. I mean, you're going from playing, I mean, I mean, you can consider them men, but I mean, young men that are still developing. Um, but also the, uh, I mean, the, I mean, in the NCAA, you're playing against guys that could be up to 25 years old. Yeah. So, like, it's at that at that point, they're legitimate men. So, I mean, you kind of get away with stuff that you don't really get away with in in junior and and yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, that's kind of my kind of my route, I guess. It's kind of more of a men's league, anyways. The college route. Yeah, d- I mean, there's d- depends on who you are as a player. I mean, I was a late bloomer as a kid. Um, so I mean, kind of that junior A college route made more sense for me than deciding to go WHL. I mean, I was never picked in the Bantam draft. Um, so I mean, that kind of 
wrote appealed to me a little bit more. Um, but I mean, obviously if you're, if you're a man child growing up, I mean, it's not, it's no, there's no secret about, it. I mean, the WHL is a quicker route to the NHL, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a late bloomer like myself, I think going that college route works a lot, hell of a lot better. Did you play Absolutely. Other, did you play any other sports growing up? Oh yeah. Uh, I, my, my mom said I'd have to quit school if I, if I uh, didn't stop playing sports, but uh, yeah, played baseball, soccer, football, rugby, um, and hockey. Okay. Okay. Any uh, nicknames? What's your favorite jersey number and why? Nicknames. <laughs> the, jo- the joke is, I mean, I have a ton of nicknames. You can go any which way with them, but uh, my kind of ones I like are Gus. You're like Gus the bus. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and favorite number is nine. Uh, for whatever reason, like I've, I just always was a fan of Maurice Richard, and I I, kind of, I watched that the the movie The Rocket at a young age, you know, and I just kind of just kind of became enamored with him, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah. and I've worn number nine ever since. My favorite number nine, of course, is Pavel Bure in New York Rangers jersey. Oh yeah, that that's that's a classic <laughs> as well. Yeah, I got that jersey in the closet too. That's a beauty. <laughs> that, that's a rarity. Statue. I haven't I haven't seen one of those. Yeah, the old Statue of Liberty one. That's we got the it's the old third jersey from like ninety whatever year that was ninety eight or two thousand. That's sick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's sick. Um, okay, what would you, you say? say? Uh, oh, go ahead, Mike. Go, go shoot it. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, who do you see yourself uh, mirroring your game after trying to play like? Uh I mean, I try to, I try to mirror my game off of Brandon Gallagher. I'd say the most. Um, kind of we have some similarities just like with our desire to get to the net and kind of be a pest but also kind of having that skill aspect of it so i mean i'd say honestly say like a hybrid between gallagher and marshawn except felt the okay. marshawn licking guys faces off and all that sort of stuff <laughs> okay oh this is getting a little early here in the conversation to be telling the beer league story but uh, <laughs> uh, they always i always like to play like marshawn or I, my my favorite player was Theo Fleury growing up. Oh yeah, that's another, a another small tiny small tiny little guy wears fourteen just like me and drives everybody crazy. So I'm always out there banging at beer league at eight rinks and trying to. I got like, they're always trying to attack me. I'm throwing goalies helmets over the glass. Like oh yeah, the, the, the <laughs> I love goalie, that. Yeah, the goalie tried to attack me. I peeled his lid, threw it. I mean, I'm the I'm I'm, I'm like the dirtiest guy in the whole beer league at eight rinks. I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, um, what's one aspect of your game you're looking to improve? Ah, uh, I mean, I you can ask that question to about any hockey player, and they'll say probably their whole their game and as a whole. But I mean, for me individually, I'd probably say probably continuing to develop my defensive side of the game. I mean, I'm a guy who always thinks uh, offense, offense, offense all the time, which I mean isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's helps me get to where I am today. But I mean, at the end of the day, I want to give myself the best opportunity to play in the NHL. And at the end of the day, you got to be able to earn a coach's trust. And that starts with defense. So, and I think kind of getting my feet wet in the AHL this year was really, really proved dividends and kind of showed me the importance of that. And uh, hopefully I can just kind of continue to develop it. Absolutely. And then uh, take me back to probably the biggest day in your life. I drafted in 2018, uh, 126th overall by the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, going into that, I was an absolute ball of anxiety. I was a wreck. I didn't know what I was going to, what was going to happen. I mean, I was like, okay, like I really want to get picked, but also like if I, I don't want to get my hopes up if I don't get picked and be all sad and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I just chose like, I just kind of went the route of, all right, I'm just going to think I didn't get, I didn't get picked and not really watch it. Um, So I was, my brother actually had it on, in the kitchen in our old house we had like the kitchen was hidden from the living living room where uh the tv was and my brother was watching it on the tv and i was making myself some uh some eggs and uh i get a text my phone buzzes i get a text from my my agent and he says uh just ottawa and i come <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm confused my then all of a sudden my my brother screams and then my name pops up i turn around my name pops up on the screen so, so it was kind of a kind of a cool way to find out and obviously being able to share that moment not only with my brother who's been one of my biggest fans 
ever since I can remember, but also my parents as well, who I can't thank enough for all the sacrifices that they've done. But uh, I'd say those eggs tasted pretty good afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would have been hard to eat, that's for sure. No, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> hey, do you have any hobbies uh, outside of sports now? Oh, I'm, a, I'm huge into golf right now. I mean, I think I kind of got that, uh, got the bug, as we call it, when I was kind of 16 and uh, kind of ran with it from there. I played a little bit of high school golf, funny enough, when I was at uh, Burnaby Hockey Academy when, okay. for, the, for the high school team, which was kind of fun. But uh, I mean, other than that, I'm, I'm huge into music. I got a really cool collection of vinyl records of like old school rock. I'm a huge Rolling Stones fan, Led Zeppelin, uh, Black Sabbath, all those guys, ACDC. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's not very popular with people these days. So whenever people are <laughs> riding around in my car, they're like, what the what the heck is this music on right now but uh <laughs> but uh i mean i don't know it's just what i'm into and i, I don't know i love it oh yeah the old school stuff's awesome big time and it's not music these days i'm gonna sound like a 60 year old man while i'm saying this but music these days isn't what it isn't what it was back in the day no no man, definitely not even for your generation that's 10 years probably i'm, I'm gonna say more like 20 but you're you're younger than me but the uh i always look at 90s hip-hop as like my favorite era of hip-hop. hands down i completely yeah. agree with you and then 2000s maybe there's some but then 2010 and on it's like just garbage hip-hop and i can't even listen to it anymore i grew up on hip-hop making music and stuff so I, hip-hop was always my favorite Oh, I completely agree. I mean, the 90s stuff is so much better. And then, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, the 2000s, I mean, outside of Jay-Z and maybe Eminem, Kanye, there wasn't much else. Yeah, 50 no. Cent, yeah. Any, uh, any pregame meals or rituals? Oof. I don't really have, I mean, I will just have some sort of protein, a starch and some veggies. Normally that's pasta and chicken and a salad, but, uh, I mean, at the, at the rank, I'm pretty, I'm regimented, but without like being a psycho, I yeah, mean, I kind of, kind of like to do things in a certain way. I'm sure hawk, I mean, all hockey players are, we're creatures of habit for, uh, yeah. for a reason, but I mean, I always put like my right side on first. So I'll put on like my right skate before my left and stuff like that. Um, and like, I'll tape my stick. I don't go from heel to toe. I go from toe to heel which has become a little more popular these days. But uh, other than that, like nothing, nothing crazy. I don't have a jock from when I was seven years old, like said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the, 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 the Connor Geeky one that we've heard, right? The very oh, I haven't heard that one. He used, he used to put, we don't know if he still does because it's been a year since we interviewed him, but he, he was, uh, he puts his right leg pad on his left leg and his yeah. left leg and pad on his, on his right, right leg. Interesting. I haven't heard that one. Yeah. That's pretty. That's yeah. in. That's in. Wow. We had one. we had one we had one guy too tell us that he uh, he blew up a balloon uh, with a straw before every game to get the lungs going. Inter what? Yeah. 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 Wow. That was, that, a, that, a was that was that was a football player that was in college football played college football and then of course and then, the, the and then Simon Simon yeah Simon Knack of uh, I think he just got drafted by. I don't want to make a guess here, but I think it's Columbus. Um, he's a Portland he, uh, he, Yeah, he's a Portland winter hawk. Yes, he eats a banana between every single period and the start of the game. So he has one in the beginning, one after the first, one after the second, one after the game. It's a lot of bananas. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> holy, holy crap. <laughs> hey, I got one here. If you were hosting right. a dinner party and you can invite three famous people, dead or alive, who are you inviting? Uh... Mick Jagger would be one just to hear some of the stories that he's got from on tour. Um, I'd probably invite uh, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, but also yeah. I'm trying to think of, I mean, I'm a pretty political guy. So I think I would honestly, I would invite uh, like, I, I'd probably invite Obama. Cause I, I don't know. Okay. I, I find him as just kind of a captivating speaker and I'm sure he has, some crazy stories about politics, but I, I know that group probably wouldn't mesh, mesh that great, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of the three. Hey, that's your dream yeah, yeah. party. It's your dream that's party. Right. <laughs> so my answer to that's always uh, Tupac, Seth yep. Rogen. Yep. Seth Rogen would be awesome to have a fun conversation with. 
I always go with Hulk Hogan as my next one. Or for if it's a chick, I get to bring a chick. I'd be Shakira. Classic. That, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, now that you say actors, like I feel like Ryan Reynolds would be a good one too. Yeah. Being a oh big, yeah. Jeez, I mean, there's not really any sort of bad answers when it comes to that question. No, <laughs> no, yeah. definitely not. Or to, definitely or to get not. you thinking, Mike's got three too. Uh, yeah, I always go with Muhammad Ali, Wayne Gretzky, and then uh, you got to throw in a little eye candy, Terry, Terry, uh, what? Terry Underwood. Underwood. Oh yeah, yeah. Muhammad Ali. Damn, that was a good one. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a really good guy to talk to. Yeah, take his brain. Yeah, that's for sure. Right, sure. So, what was it like? Uh, yeah, what was it like first uh, dressing up for Belleville this year and uh, taking me back to your first uh, AHL goal? Yeah, it was. Uh, kind of an interesting experience after uh i mean the college season finished up and then literally in a matter of 24 hours i had to pack up my entire three-year life that was down there which i obviously <laughs> forgot stuff so i had to go back after the season was over but uh i had to it was and then i had to drive all the way up do all the stuff with all the tests and everything in quarantine which kind of sucked but is what it is in this day and age um yeah but uh once i got out of that it was pretty it was definitely eye-opening for sure, kind of getting used to, I mean, obviously the pace and practice. The biggest thing I noticed was everyone in the lineup can make a play. Like, you know, I mean, in juniors and in some cases college, you get, uh, there's a difference in level between kind of your top six and then as you get lower in the lineup, kind yeah. of with like consistency of plays, creativity, all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, everyone in pro hockey or in the AHL at least is only taste that I've had can all make plays and it, that was the most eye-opening thing to me and the sheer pace of it not so much like the how fast guys are but more uh, like how quick the puck's moving from side to side like the pay, plays are one after another after another um so that took a little getting used to but that first game I mean I didn't really obviously I was nervous and excited kind of all those different emotions that you get with going into a game but uh yeah I mean it was Definitely eye opening for sure, and then getting that first uh, that first goal was pretty cool. I mean, it was uh, it was a funny. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the clip, but uh, I swear there's a sniper across the rink that took out my feet during my celebration. So it was, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, looking back, it was a little embarrassing in the moment, but looking back on it, it just makes it a little more memorable, in my opinion. Oh, well, yeah. We'll try to find it. We'll try to find it and have that as our no, intro. Please, please, please don't find that. <laughs> okay. I think, I've, I think I've, report, I've created burner accounts to report all those videos that have it. So oh. it's never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you well, you might, well, you might as well lead to what? That's obviously not your go-to, Sally, then. So what's your go-to, Sally? Oh, geez. When I was in school, I loved celebrating with the student section. Like go, okay, like okay. go, I like jump into the glass in the student section, or like give like a fist pump near the student section. It was, I don't know, like we at UNH, we were so lucky. Where, I mean, the students are unbelievable. We were, I mean, it's very rare that you have an American school that hockey's the number one sport there. And I mean, obviously, it's such a football, basketball dominated country, and hockey doesn't get the same coverage. But I mean, kind of up in the Northeast, there, I mean, we were pretty lucky where hockey was the number one sport on campus. So we always got these massive crowds, which were, uh, which were a lot of fun. Um, if there's a thousand dollar prize on the line and you had to sing one karaoke song to win it, what song are you singing? Or Rookie Beast song? of Burden by the Rolling Stones. Oh, nice. Beast. Nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah, no, that's my, Good that's choice. my go to. Every time that's played, I'd belt it out. It could be in the middle of a grocery store. I'm belting that thing out as I'm walking down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Uh, who would you say the best player you played with and against is? Uh, best player I've played against was Kale McCarr my freshman year. He was absolutely illegal. He should have been banned from college hockey um, <laughs> in his sophomore year. Um, funny story about that, So, if, if you don't mind me telling. But we were, we were my freshman year, we played UMass in the first round of playoffs. And... Uh, we were up four to two in game one. It's in UMass sold out. I mean, they got a huge rink there and uh, it's like four two going into the third period. And one of our guys who kind of got sprung loose on a breakaway off of a car turnover in the offensive zone. McCarr's kind of below the top of the circles. Our guy is already at a head start. He's already at our, our blue line. McCarr's at the bottom of the circles. 
he catches our guy from a standstill by the red line. I've oh. never seen anything like that in my life. Then McCarr proceeds to have three points to tie the in the third to tie the game up and then assists on the overtime winner and we lost. And wow. It was one of the most incredible performance to watch. But like you, you could just like that was, we were up for it too, and it's like we just sunk because our guy got caught on a breakaway. That's and crazy. It was crazy. yeah. It was the definitely the most craziest thing I've ever seen. And just, just an unbelievable player. I mean, you saw it this year. But best player I played with, hmm, I'd probably say Logan Brown. Yeah. On on Ottawa, I mean, obviously he's dealt with some injury stuff, but the amount of pure skill and talent he has is downright ridiculous. I mean, you don't see very many guys that can, that are six feet, six inches that can stick handle in a phone booth and be able to move like that. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. He's got good hands. Yeah, no, he can, and he can make some outrageous passes. And I was like, I was lucky enough where I was able to play with him a decent amount in my time in Belleville. But uh, yeah, no, he was uh, definitely a lot of fun to play with. Do you have a favorite sports movie? Favorite sports movie outside of the rocket. Um, I, I I like Rudy a lot. I feel like yeah. Rudy doesn't. I feel like Rudy doesn't get the same uh, kind of recognition as all the other sports movies. But I, I don't know. You, you you can't not cheer for the guy. Like when you're watching the movie, it's just such a feel good story. So that's my favorite sports movie. Oh sweet! Not many of us around. No, it's Rudy. And we just last week had Rudy Rudiger, the real Rudy, on the podcast. Oh seriously? Yeah, the yeah. real Rudy. Oh, that's, that's actually sick. That's a pretty cool yeah. coincidence. Yeah, that's we what we got him on because he's my favorite. It's my favorite movie, right? So we literally just came out last week. We put it out last week of Rudy Rudiger, the real Rudy, and talks about the movie and how it's made. And... Oh, that's unreal. I'll go back and watch that. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. awesome. Pretty small world when that happens. No kidding. Right? Yeah, have you tried the Michigan or lacrosse goal in a game yet? Uh, I've I've tried it in practice. Uh, I tried it actually in one of the earlier practices when I was with Belleville that wasn't exactly smiled upon uh, with some of the older <laughs> guys. Um, but uh, I haven't tried it in a game. I've, I haven't gotten into a position yet to do it. I mean, it's so specific. They like it's such a specific position that you have to get into. I mean, obviously, you see, you see kids now that you just pick it up on their blade with ease and fly around with. It. I mean, you see like Kent Johnson and Bedard all do, doing that stuff. Yeah. I mean, and those guys are once in a lifetime skilled, god god given skill. But uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'll try. I haven't uh, I haven't tried it yet. I I would I'd say that's on my hockey bucket list though, is to try and to try to do that in a game. Oh yeah, it's okay. on my. It's on my bucket list too. I'm out at eight rings doing it all the time. Trying you got to- you gotta try it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel try like it I have literally to like- every game I try it. My teammates hate me. <laughs> I feel like I have to put like fifteen pounds of wax on my stick. You, you do just- pretty much. And you can only do it in like the first period or like the first few shifts. Well nice is like- clean. Yeah, no, oh, nice yeah. is clean. Because I do it the old school way where you like cup it and scoop it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, everyone that does it now is all like pick it up on the fly. It's like a rolling puck behind the net, and they just yeah. like scoop it. Yeah. But I feel like that's yeah, that's you, just like so uncommon that it, you got. I mean, you got Con- you got Connor trying it in the dub at fifteen, and uh, just about pulling it off. You know what's going to happen right. this year? Oh, you know, one hundred percent is going to happen. It's going to become more and more common. I mean, you saw Svechnikov do his thing. Yeah. 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 Just gave it that much more kind of attention. Yep. What do you think makes a good uh, captain? A good captain. I think a guy that uh, I wouldn't necessarily classify a captain as vocal. I mean, he goes out and he does everything that his teammates expect of him on a night out, night in night out basis. He's not. He's a good guy, um, but also at the same like at the same time, like obviously there's that relationship between coaches and captains, and obviously that needs to be a very smooth relationship, but at the same time, your captain should be able to stand up to the coach. Like, Hey, like this isn't, this is what the guys are thinking and that sort of stuff and be it and not just be a, for lack of a better term, a kiss ass to the coach. Yeah. Um, which I mean, if you look at any great teams in the past, that's 
the relationship between coaches and players, it's, there's a mutual respect there, which, uh, which is pretty, which is pretty special. But also, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I think a captain, it doesn't really matter where they play in the lineup. It could be your top line center, like I said, or it could be like a fourth line left winger. Um, Like it's, it's one, a guy that all the boys love, but also who does his job on a night in night out basis and isn't about himself. Yeah. What colors your stick tape and uh, favorite Gatorade color? The favorite Gatorade color uh, is actually a mix. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this, but if you do like a half yellow, half blue mix becomes green, hands down, yeah. not even close, best flavor. Okay, um, okay. I knob is white tape and I'm black tape on the, on the blade. I'm pretty, pretty old school. Don't have the funny what? pastor neck tape job where there's like three strips across the entire blade. <laughs> I've got one. I, I, I always have the white stick tape and then I trace the puck and put it and I trace the puck and color it in with the Sharpie. So it looks like I have oh, multiple, seriously? So I, so it looks like I have multiple pucks on my stick tape. And it doesn't that's work. That's pretty smart. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> help my game at all. <laughs> I think uh, it's uh, isn't it isn't it uh Stutzel too that has a weird uh tape job? Yeah, he doesn't has he the, just like do like a strip or something? Yeah, he like tapes his toe like three or four strips and then has like the horizontal line through the rest of his blade or something right, like that. Right, it's, right. it's pretty unique. I haven't seen anyone else do have a tape job like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, would you say your uh, biggest hockey moment so far in your career would be? Biggest hockey moment. I have a couple. I think playing in the World Junior A and beating the U.S. to win gold is definitely up there. The best part of that was my dad was there to watch it. Um, right on. And at school, favorite moment was probably scoring overtime goal against Michigan at home, which was just electric. That's uh, a big one. And then, uh, <laughs> obviously, not signing my uh, NHL contract. Are we talking the same Michigan like Ken Johnson? So I was against Kent? No, no, no. It was the year before nope. Kent went in. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. And, yeah, but it was that was a pretty cool moment. Okay, if you had to eat one of the two pancakes or waffles for the rest of your life, what one are you choosing? Waffles, hands down. I think pancakes are overrated. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Good call. I think I, there's so much more you can do with a waffle than a pancake. I mean, pancakes just get soggy after a while, whereas yeah. waffles like a little crispy. Okay. And you got, uh, the, can you, you got the dips that you got the little whole mouthful of syrup. Oh, well, right. that or I, I like doing a little bit of Nutella on the side too. Maybe I'll slice up a banana too. There you That's go. good, yeah. Uh, how would you describe your game or your playing style? I'd say hard nose, willing to go to the dirty areas. I don't really care what size you are, how much you weigh, how much you bench press, but uh, I'll, I'll still find a way to help battle you in front of the net in the corner, wherever it may be. Good aspects to have. And how, how awesome is that uh, camp that you guys go to? That we met you at. Oh, it's uh, that coach is a really nice guy. Yeah, no, I mean both of them. I mean Morley, Brendan Morley and John Calvano are both great. I mean John's. I mean, if you think hockey in Vancouver, John Calvano always comes up. Um, I mean, it's it's such a good skate out there. I mean, you want to be skating with the. I mean, that's all you want is to be skating with the NHL guys. I mean, and you go out there and you're obviously skating, obviously skating with Barzell, who's a my opinion, a top 10 player in the league yeah. yep. and see what he's able to do. And you, know, you try, you try your best to kind of mimic that. Obviously he's, uh, there's some God given talent there that uh, not all of us have. Um, but uh, I mean, just being like the little nuances, even when we play like the small area games after practice, kind of like the different things that guys do with their body to get positioning or separate themselves somehow. And you kind of take, take mental notes and try to find ways to implement that into your game. Uh, I just want to thank you again for uh, taking the time for us today and coming on and chatting with us. Uh, obviously, we're fans of you, and uh, we can't wait to see you uh, excel at the next level. We know you're going to be in the NHL one day, so uh, one one step at a time, and you're going to light up the AHL this year, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see, boys. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you guys having and me on. You've got a fan. You've got a fan in us now for life. You know that too. And. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. 
We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, sent you.